Pretty Girl Club. This is another episode of kind of my introductory series where I'm describing what this channel is about. So I've described my core audience, but I have not described kind of the other subliminal undertones of this YouTube channel. Um, this channel is supposed to be a safe space for beautiful women. So I know that a lot of women who don't feel like they have pretty privilege, they're going to see my titles, they're going to see the thumbnails and stuff, and they're going to think that a lot of us over here think we are better because a lot of women associate beauty with being conceited or they associate um, thinking you're cute with thinking you're better. In fact, that's why people will say, oh, you think you're cute. And they're saying it as an insult, as if it's bad to think you're cute. But I believe that beautiful women deserve a safe space too. Beautiful women deserve to have confidence as well. Beautiful women have the right to utilize their beauty as a form of leverage if they want to. Beautiful women have a right to utilize their social power if they want to. And so that's a part of what this channel is about. It's for women who they either have pretty privilege, they relate to the, the content about pretty privilege, whether they're a part of my core community or not. I actually have white women on this channel, Indian women, all races of women. But the reason that I talk about that stuff is because I've noticed a pattern when studying sociology, which is the study of society, there's this pattern where if you're pretty, you're not allowed to have confidence as well. You know, you're not allowed to use your beauty to your advantage. You're not allowed to even take ownership over your own beauty. Men actually feel entitled to you if you're beautiful or your friends and family will tell you, oh my God, you're pretty. Why aren't you married? You know, why aren't you using your beauty for a man? Why aren't you using your beauty to gain a man? But this channel talks about the nuances of beauty. Beauty is actually not a monolith. And so you have the right to use your beauty however you want. And one of the critiques that I get of this channel is that, oh, the exoticals, they're not actually pretty because real beautiful women, they wouldn't even be on the internet at all. They would be out enjoying their lives and going into VIP sections of clubs and, you know, they'd be out doing modeling gigs. And I can tell by that sort of comment that that person not only does not have the experience of feeling beautiful themselves, but they also don't know anyone in real life who is beautiful. Anyone who has pretty family members or anyone who actually is pretty, they know that pretty women are not a monolith. There are pretty women who are introverted. There are pretty women who don't want to be famous. There are pretty women who don't want to date men. There are pretty women who are gay. There are pretty women who are asexual or they're nuns or they are very religious or spiritual. And so this channel discusses the nuances of all of those things. And I also want to remind you guys that you have the right to take ownership over your own beauty. And so one thing I want you to do while you're watching this is I want you to ask yourself, what is the purpose of my pretty privilege? What is the purpose of my beauty? What do I want to use my beauty for? Because for some women, they just want to enjoy their own beauty. They literally just want to feel beautiful and just have confidence and that's it. And that's enough for them. And also just because someone is pretty, it doesn't mean they're not allowed to be on the internet. It doesn't mean they're not allowed to create YouTube channels discussing pretty privilege or discussing their experiences and kind of venting about their experiences. One pattern I've noticed is that when you go on YouTube channels where they make comments like, oh, I don't have pretty privilege and that sucks, or I, I'm not perceived as being as feminine as these other people in the media, or I'm not pretty in the media, a lot of women like that, you know, those are not safe spaces for women who have a different experience. And so this channel is created to be a safe space for all the pretty girls of whatever race to really come together and, you know, we can talk about our own social strategies, we can overcome obstacles on our own and actually find healing because we don't have to deal with a bunch of catty women over here who don't feel like they're pretty, so then they want to tear you down because you do think you're pretty. You know, then they want to say, well, you're not actually pretty. You're not as pretty as this other person. And it's like, beauty is not a competition um, unless you're in a pageant or something. And I've noticed that people think that if you think you're pretty, that you are putting yourself on a hierarchy and you're putting yourself above them. And another thing that I've noticed is that people will shame you for being pretty while simultaneously seeking after pretty privilege themselves. So that's another reverse psychology humbling tactic that people will use on you. They want to guilt you for being beautiful. They do this in a lot of religious circles as well. Let's say you have pretty privilege in terms of your body, 
People will tell you, oh no, you can't wear a bikini, you can't wear a skirt, you can't wear that cheerleading outfit. And they're doing that because they don't want you to be able to attract attention. They don't want you to um, be able to leverage that attention because attention is actually a very powerful thing. Think about when a company purchases space to have an ad, you know, they purchase airtime and stuff like that. What they're doing is they're really buying their way into getting attention. So as a pretty woman, you naturally have something that people are paying to get, which is attention. You have attractiveness, you know, attraction or being attractive. That means that you literally attract attention. That's the whole definition of being attractive. And so beauty is a form of social power, but a lot of people will not tell you that because they don't want you to know your own power. They don't want you to take ownership over your own life. But I'm making this video because for all the pretty girls watching, I want you to think to yourself, what is the purpose of my pretty privilege? And also why do I want pretty privilege? Why do I care about pretty privilege? I've noticed that one of the main reasons women care about pretty privilege is because pretty privilege is just a stepping stone. It's not about the beauty in and of itself. It's about utilizing that beauty as a tool to get what you want. I've noticed that sometimes the women who are the most angry about not having pretty privilege, usually it's because they themselves wish that they had pretty privilege so they can get a man or something. You know, it's about the male gaze, of course, or it's about wanting brand deals, wanting followers on social media. So once again, it's about social status. So if you have pretty privilege, you automatically have a form of social status. And I want you to begin to think about that. Okay, how do I want to use my status? And this is a part of why I do a decentering men series on here. This is also a part of why I no longer believe in male and female friendships because I now understand the value of my social status. I understand the value of my beauty. Did you know that men are so women centered to the point where other men will actually judge him based on how many beautiful women he can sleep with. Um, how pretty is his girlfriend? Oh, his girlfriend's ugly. This is why a lot of men are ashamed if they feel like their girlfriend is quote unquote ugly and they don't want to be seen with her in public and stuff because men actually shame other men and call them incels for not being able to attract and keep the attention of a beautiful woman. And so this is a part of why I tell the pretty girls that I personally don't believe in male and female friendships anymore because that man, you're literally increasing his social status just by walking around next to him, you know, just by being seen out in public with him. Meanwhile, he hasn't invested in you. He hasn't taken you on a date. You know, he's not even treating you special or anything because he's just a quote unquote friend. So he puts in no effort, but he gets to profit off of his newfound social status that he has by being next to you. Another thing that I've noticed about beautiful women is that your social status increases that man's social status to the point where other women who were not attracted to him, as soon as you like him, or as soon as you're even seen in public with him, boom, now five other girls like him. As soon as you start dating a guy and then maybe you dump him or something, then boom, suddenly other girls want to date him. Why? It's because as a pretty girl, you have social status. And when you have social status, you're automatically considered to be a trendsetter. This is another reason why people are angry at the phrase exotical. The word exotical was actually a word that I got directly from Chrissy's comment section, because I remember the day that I started this YouTube channel, I was trying to think of the craziest insult that I had heard about myself or about my uh, phenotype or about my community. So I was like, okay, what's the craziest, dumbest insult that I've ever been called or the dumbest thing that they've ever said about women like myself? And I was like, oh, it's that one word exotical. So I took that word. And now that all of us are utilizing that word and, you know, we're using it as a fun nickname, you guys know what we do over here. We practice transmutation. And so we like to take on the insults of others and then call ourselves by that insult. We like to take back words. I do that all the time. By the way, feel free to call me psychotical, diabolical, unlogical. Call me whatever you want to call me. But now people are actually angry that we use the word exotical. And now they're actually fighting to take back that word. And they're saying, well, no, you're not an exotical. So-and-so is not an exotical. You don't get to call yourselves exoticals. You think you're better because you're calling yourself an exotical. So they started off using it as an insult. But then as soon as you, the pretty girl, take on that word and say, okay, yeah, I guess I am an exotical. That's fine. I mean, you keep calling me that. So I, I'll just embrace it. 
Now suddenly, because your beauty gives you social status and because you're viewed as a trendsetter, if you take on an insult, oh, it's no longer an insult. Exotical is no longer an insult anymore. It is now a phrase that people are associating with social status because 10,000 pretty women on YouTube came together and said, yeah, we'll call ourselves that. That's fine. It's a funny, silly name. And so do you see how much power and leverage you have Just because of your perceived beauty and your perceived status, anything you do, anything you touch, anyone you hang out with, their status increases. And so beautiful women deserve a safe space. We deserve a space where we can strategize and pick and choose. Okay, what scenarios do I want to be in? What types of people do I want to be around? Oh, what? She's jealous of me? Oh, she's mean to me? Okay, well, then I don't want to be around her. We have the right to utilize the things that we were born with or to utilize the beauty that we purchased because some people, they have plastic surgery or you got a tummy tuck or whatever and now it has increased your pretty privilege. Okay, well, we have the right to have a safe space. We have the right to discuss our own social strategies and who gon' check us. Anyway, what do you ladies think? Let me know in the comment section and I'll talk to you next time. Stay pretty, ladies.